What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Hey, Cooper. Hey, so I, like, I'm new still to the community, and I, someone told me about this fabulous place, and I went and checked it out for myself. The church community shop in downtown Cartersville is on Main Street, and on Thursday is our church's day to volunteer, and I'm going to go ahead and assume we have the volunteers, but the whole reason why I'm telling you about this is so you know this place. So I bought this cute shirt for a dollar, I mean a dollar, right, and all of the money goes into Bartow County, and so you can make donations, it's a thrift boutique, and it's run by all of the churches. It's this beautiful ecumenical way to uh, work together. And so on Thursday is our church's day to go and volunteer. And unfortunately, I'm saying all this and I can't even be there, but go check out this place and find yourself a treasure or two. I'm telling you, you could have a whole bag for $20. And know that your money is staying in Bartow County. Or if you are cleaning out your house and you have nice clothes, that is a great place to donate them. So check it out on Thursday. Michael, it's Community Church Shop. It has a purple awning. I don't know exactly what's around it, but... Right across from Jefferson's. There you go. Um, It's a great place to find some really good finds. um, And I hope that you can check it out at some point. Some other announcements. We have really ramped back up kids and youth ministries. And so on Wednesday nights is the place to be if you have a kid or youth. Wednesday night uh, at 445 is the kids. And at 6 o'clock is the youth. And so I hope that if you have someone that age that you bring them so then they can learn about God and be with their friends and be in prayer together. The last announcement is tonight is another listening session where Dan Parr will come and be speaking. Dan is the president of the WCA chapter in North Georgia. Dan's wife, Robin, is the associate pastor at Dahlonega, but she used to be the associate pastor at Duluth United Methodist, uh, which is my home church, although I had, was already grown when she arrived. And I'll, I'll never forget someone that I babysat growing up. I was back home at the Duluth Fall Festival. Robin made me a um, funnel cake, and then this youth came up and was like, hey, Ashley, how are you? I you know, had babysat her, and Robin and Dan had like hosted all the youth at their house or something like that. So they are the real deal. So I'm excited to have Dan tonight. This is the place, this is the time to worship God together. This is the moment. And let everything that we do and learn in this place impact our community and change our lives. Let's worship God together.
This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in your midst. And I pray that that's the reason we're all here this morning. It's to seek his presence. What an awesome thought, isn't it? Jesus is not only here in us, but he's here with us. So if you would, would you pray with me? Lord, we praise you. Uh, We worship you. We adore you. We thank you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. And Lord, as always, I just ask that you'll give us all eyes to see what you see. Lord, I ask that you'll give us ears to hear what you hear. And especially, Lord, we ask that you'll that soften these hearts of ours. Give us hearts to know you better here this morning. We ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. All right, would you all stand and uh, greet everyone? Thank you. Let us say what we believe together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven. And sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence who shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
the kids come on forward and meet Miss Leslie. graceful walking I have from time to time. Well, good morning, you guys. How are you? Good. Good. I have a question for you. Hi, Alex. What holiday falls in March or April? Oh. Mm -hmm. Christmas falls in December. This one will be March or April, depending upon what year it is. Coop? Your birthday and April Fool's. The, f the fact right. that you remember my birthday scares me a little bit, but I yes. Know. I'm an April Fool's baby. No comments needed from anybody behind me. But that's not the holiday I'm thinking of either. Ellicate? Easter. Easter falls in one of those two months. It just kind of depends upon how the calendar hits that year. Now, this is not March or April, is it? What month is this? August. That was a tough question. I know. It's August. So why would I be talking about Easter in August? Coop? That's the day he rose from the dead. That is what Easter is all about, the day he rose from the dead. And this which, church is about Jesus. You know what? You can just do my whole children's moment today. Good job, buddy. I could. You could, but you would not. I mean, because you are the preacher. I'm not the preacher. That's the preacher. Okay. Yeah, nope, not a preacher, just a teacher. Big difference. Yeah, I was about to say. Well, I'm going to read some Bible verses to you real quick, okay? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I work with children. So Miss Liz is going to read you a couple of verses. This is out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it's verses... 54 through 57, and it says this. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through the Lord Jesus Christ. Whew. Those are kind of tough words and tough phrases in there. But basically what it says is, when we sin, and how many of us have sinned? Has anybody ever sinned? Raise your hand. I should see every hand everywhere raised. Because you know what? We've all at some point sinned, done something wrong. Some of us may have done it more than others, but you know we've all sinned. Yeah. yeah. I know, I have. Thank you. Probably over 20. Probably over 20. I'm not even going to sit down and count, but yes. Um, but we've all sinned. And the, the punishment for sin, did you know, is death? Yeah. Hmm kind of harsh, isn't it? But do you know there's a really cool part if we listen to the last part of those verses? And it says that the victory over death or the victory over sin is the resurrection of who? God. Of Jesus. That Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins so that we will have eternal life in heaven with God. So even though we've sinned, that sin is forgiven because of the death of Jesus Christ and his ultimate resurrection three days later. And that's why here in August we're talking about Easter. Because Easter doesn't just happen in March and April. I mean, the holiday does. But the actual celebration is... Every single second of your life. Exactly. Yes. Rock on. And for those who didn't hear, it's every single second of all of your life. We... Remember what Jesus did for us, that resurrection. Let's bow our heads and pray. There's nothing else I can really say after that. 
Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing these children here today and helping us to remember that every day, as Cooper said, every single second of every day of our lives, we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made to forgive us of our sins so that we can go to heaven and live life eternal with you. In your most awesome and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Aren't we so lucky that our kids can preach to us? Yes. Right? Cooper's saying every moment of every day. Wow. He is right. As our ushers come forward, let us say a prayer. God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Help us to be good stewards of all aspects of our lives. Every moment of every day, let us praise and worship you. Amen. Give you a little background for the scripture reading this morning. Um, the Apostle Paul had his hands full with the church in Corinth. And what Pastor Ashley is going to be talking about today was just one of those issues, which was a big one, resurrection. Uh, Sadducees had 
actually had some of them believing that there was no resurrection. And it looks like maybe some had actually believed in Christ's resurrection, but not the actual body resurrection. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who are fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under, it, under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Now, if there is no resurrection, what will those who do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus for merely human reasons, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I feel like between the singing and the children's moment and the scripture, I don't even have to preach today. Someone said, please do. What a beautiful response back. As we go to God in prayer, God can hold all of our heartache, all of our joys, all of our grief, all of our happiness. We can bring it all to the feet of God. Let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you for speaking. Thank you for the speaking and giving us the Ten Commandments. Thank you for speaking through the prophets and the judges. And thank you so much in the New Testament through speaking through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us so much. Thank you for his teaching on the resurrection and life. Thank you that you prepare a place for us. Thank you for the New Testament, for Paul and John and all the authors that speak. Thank you that throughout the Bible, the theme of the resurrection 
is promised to us. Not only the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, but the resurrection of us. Help us hold on to that promise and the assurance that you give us. Thank you for the gift of atonement that you have made us one again in Christ and one again through your amazing grace. God, anchor our church. Guide this place so that what we do in this place can uplift this community, uplift our families, and point to you, Almighty God. And now, today, with all of these people gathered here, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amidst the hustling, clamoring world, sometimes it's hard to hear the voice of God speaking to my soul. But in my quiet time alone, when I approach His holy throne, His tender words fall gently on my ears he still speaks I love his voice sweeter songs never heard by one speak to me it makes me rejoice he still speaks I know his voice there are so many who still doubt that God can speak today They laugh and mock when we say we've heard from God. Yet the still small voice of God is heard above the doubters of this world. He timeless words ring out with hope today. He still speaks. His voice, sweeter sounds never heard by mortal ear. And to think that God, by His own choice, would speak. It makes me rejoice He still speaks I know His voice He still speaks He still speaks
But someone may ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed, he gives its own body. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and stars differ from star in splendor. So it'll be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there's also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. First man was of the dust of the earth, and the second man from heaven. And as with the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so are those who are of heaven. And just as we, we have been born the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of God for the people of God.
started in my sermon, I want to do a little advertisement. A few weeks ago, I was talking about church, and I compared a cruise ship, which I've never been on, but I've heard that they have buffets of food everywhere, and all-you-can-eat ice cream all the time, to a battleship. And the cruise ship is just for fun and for pleasure, which, don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with a good vacation. But a battleship, all hands on deck, right? We need everybody. So we are starting the nominations process shortly, which is a fancy way to say all the church leadership. And we need you. All hands on deck. We need every aspect of this church. People working and teaching. I have been so amazed. It's a whole group of men, but women can do it too, that keep the yard looking beautiful. They do a fantastic job. That is just one example of something all hands on deck. We need everybody. It's a battleship. We need everybody all hands on deck. So if you are interested in any, and I mean any church leadership role, we need you. See me and see Cindy Schwartz, and we're going to start that process soon. You're also going to be getting an email from me, and we need you. All right, so this is the last one of the sermon series on the Apostles' Creed. We started from the beginning. I believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and the earth. And now we are at, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. I saw this quote and it said, the Apostles' Creed ends where Easter begins. I love that. The Apostle Creed ends where Easter begins. So I thought it would be kind of fun at the beginning to show pictures of the Easter egg hunt this past year. Apparently it was raining. This is before my time. So, Teresa, if you just want to slide through these quickly. Right here are Easter eggs. Oh, hi, Sharon. Look, she's up there. Even in the youth area. And then look how filled their eggs like their baskets were. I think the kids were on a sugar high from the Easter egg hunt. Here's the reality about life. Death happens. It happens. None of us can escape death. But we wouldn't want to as Christians. Death is hard. We all have faced death of a loved one, death of a friend, and it's painful. Jesus in the Beatitude says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And you remember that Jesus wept in the Bible over his friend's, friend Lazarus. Death is hard and death is painful. But that is not the end. We talked a few weeks ago, right, that Jesus is the resurrection and Jesus is life. And we, it's talked about in the Apostles' Creed, right, that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, that Jesus carried his cross to Calgary, that took on the weight of the world, Poor Mark, when I asked him to read our scripture lesson today, I sent it to him, and he sent back this emoji of like, oh my goodness. And I said back to him, you can't talk about the resurrection of the body without first talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so in the New Testament, there is a group of people called the Sadducees. And I'll never forget, in fact, some people at the 845 service knew this. I had this uh, New Testament professor in seminary, and he was very dry speaking. Just lectured just like this, didn't have his voice up and down or anything like that. And he said to the class, you can just imagine him like this, class, do you know uh, how to differentiate the Sadducees from any other group? 
And then he smiled. They're sad. And I was like, what? What? You just actually smiled. They're sad, you see, right? Because they don't see the power of the resurrection. Of course they're sad, right? I'm glad you all know this too, right? It's kind of funny, and it's a play on words. But they miss the whole point of being a Christian. It's the resurrection. That we are resurrection people. Instead of calling us Christians... Now, don't get me wrong when I say this. We are Christians, right? But we can also be called resurrection people because we believe in the resurrection. And Paul is reminding the church in Corinth that we believe in the resurrection. The Sadducees might say no, but that's not the purpose of Christianity. You are missing the whole point of Christianity if you do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And then the scripture goes on to say, you know, that we have physical bodies. But then we are given a spiritual body. That when we die, that is not the end of our lives. Right? It's just a comma. It's not a period at the end when we die. It's a comma. Because then our life is beginning in heaven. I loved when Cooper was like, every day of every part of our life, right? And I didn't want to interrupt him. He was so cute during the children's moment. And then I wanted to say, and guess what about that life? It's not just here on earth, but it's in heaven. Thanks be to God for that. The, the end of our Apostles' Creed reminds us that we get to have the resurrection of not only Jesus' body, not only has that happened, but we get the promise of our body being resurrected and life and life in abundance. Like Cooper said, ever and ever. That we get this life In our scripture verse, it says, at the end of it, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is a law. This is where it gets really good. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know the labor in the Lord is not in vain. But thanks be to God. He has given us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. He has given us the victory over sin through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, thanks be to God. I think if you're like me, and many of us have this, that we wonder, what is heaven going to be like? And there are some examples in the Bible, or not examples, there is some scripture verses that talk about it. In John 14, it's, Jesus says, In my Father's house there are many rooms, and I go and prepare a place for you. Well, think about this. Jesus preparing a place for us. There's something really comforting to think about that the place is being prepared for us. And then in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No eye has seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared them, prepared for them, for all who love him. We have not seen, we have not heard, but the Lord our God is preparing a place 
for us. You probably, since many of you know the Sadducee, you know, comparison, I'm sure many of you have heard stories about how a wealthy man was dying and God said, okay, you get one suitcase. You get one suitcase to bring to heaven. And the rich man is like, well, I can't bring, you know, $100 bills because I don't know the currency in heaven. But what is the currency I can bring? I'm going to bring gold, right? You've probably heard this. So he fills his suitcase with gold, brings it in, opens it up, and then an angel or Jesus, I don't know, depending on the story that you read, looks at the man and says, why did you bring concrete or pavement, right? I love sharing that story then on top of this story, that a grandfather and granddaughter We're out looking at the stars one night. Picture the most beautiful display of stars you have seen. Maybe the moon is really bright. Maybe you can see one of the, uh, you know, the, the constellations, yes. Maybe you can see some of that. And the granddaughter and grandfather were talking about it. And then the granddaughter said something to the effect of, wow, if this is just the beginning, just the little bottom part of heaven, imagine how majestic, how beautiful, how peaceful, how joyful heaven must be. So we've got streets of gold, but then I love even more thinking about how beautiful the stars are, and that is just a glimpse of what heaven will be like. We know that heaven will be a place filled with love and joy, and that there will be no more sickness, no more sorrow, and that we get everlasting life with God. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that gives us life and life abundance. That we have been given this physical body, but then even better than that, we are given a spiritual body to have in heaven. What an amazing, amazing thing. So one of the things that I love about being United Methodist is that you get to learn kind of tricks and trade when you talk to other United Methodist pastors. And I saw another United Methodist pastor do this at a funeral one time, and I thought, wow, wow, this is so beautiful. He had a piece of paper ready to go, and it said transfer of membership from the church to the church triumphant. And at the end of the funeral, he held up the piece of paper and he said, as a pastor of this church, I officially uh, transfer the membership from this church to the church triumphant. That one day we will no longer be members of this church, but we will be members of the church triumphant in heaven. And that's possible because of all of it. Because of God creating. Because of Jesus coming to earth and being our Savior. And taking on the weight of the world taking on sin of the world, going to the cross. But the cross wasn't the end. Then Jesus rose in three days. But we get to have not only the resurrection of Jesus, but our resurrection. Thanks be to God for that. That on Easter, 
Not only do we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, but that also points to one day to our resurrection. To us getting to heaven. In your bulletin, I put a poem that I thought summed up exactly what I was trying to say in the most beautiful, poetic way. And I want you to take it home with you. And you know how I've been encouraging you to take home your bulletins? Well, I want you to take home this, and I want you to read from uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and then I want you to read this every day this week. And this is like a love letter that someone is writing to their family. And this person has just gotten to heaven. Picture the joy. Picture the excitement of seeing Jesus face to face. And then this is written. Oh, by the way, the author is unknown. Um, I wish I knew the author. I am home in heaven, dear ones. Oh, so happy and so bright. There is perfect joy and beauty in this everlasting light. All pain and grief is over. Every restless tossing past. I'm now at peace forever. Safely home in heaven at last. Did you ever wonder I so calmly trod the valley of the shade Oh, but Jesus' love illumined every dark and fearful glade. And he came himself to meet me in that way so hard to tread. And with Jesus' arm to lean on, could I have had one doubt, comma, dread? Then you must not grieve so sorely, for I love you dearly still. Try to look beyond earth's shadows. Pray to trust our Father's will. There is still work waiting for you, so you must not idly stand. Do it now while life remaineth. You shall rest in Jesus' land. When the work is all completed, He will gently call you home. Oh, the joy of this place. Oh, the joy to see you come. Oh, the joy of this place. Oh, the joy to see you come. We as Christians believe in God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of ourselves, the forgiveness of sins, and life everlasting. Thanks be to God. Please stand, and Marvin is going to uh, lead us in our closing hymn. Sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling, 
in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, there is my soul's of songs. Faithful, loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. You all hands on deck. Would love to see you at the meeting tonight. Uh, it's my mother in law's birthday, so I'm going to be like pulling in right at 5 59 because uh, we will be celebrating. And then, kids and youth, have them come. One last thing starting next week, we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer and going line by line of that. I don't necessarily always preach like that, that Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer, you know, line by line. But I thought it would be a good place for us to start uh, so then we all know together what we believe. And then I love going into the Lord's Prayer next because then it's how we can apply and pray what we believe. Our benediction will be the last two lines of the poem. Oh, the joy of this place, this place being heaven. Oh, the joy to see you come. Thanks be to God. Amen.